Hello again, this is Sickle Yield, and I'm here to talk to you about creating atmosphere in iRay. I'm going to start with the vandalized expansion for the Parkside Tube Station, which is available from the Platinum Club. Nice, inexpensive set. And I'm going to create a camera and apply active viewport transforms. I can't render through the perspective view camera because I can't turn off its headlamp, so I have no control over the lighting there. There we are. So now I've got that camera set up, and I know it's looking from the proper angle, and I can move the perspective camera around my scene. This is why I don't use the iRay viewport draw option, because I need to use the camera and move it around a lot while I'm working, and having to stop and wait for it to redraw every time I do that is incredibly slow and frustrating. So I prefer not to. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to create a primitive. Any primitive will do. I'm going to use a cylinder because this tunnel I'm going to be lighting is roughly cylindrical. And I'm going to move and rotate and scale it to basically fill my tunnel. It's good to do this before you start the process of applying the dust shader because the shader will have refraction and refraction makes things essentially invisible. The important thing is that whatever primitive you use, the camera is outside it. And the sides of it fill your entire scene. It's okay if the primitive goes outside the borders of the scene, you just don't want it inside the borders of the scene to where your haze won't fill the entire area, because the interior of this primitive is what counts. All right, there's our primitive. Now I'm going to go to its shader, and I'm going to apply the iRay base shader. I've already, I'm going to apply that shader to all of these things, actually. I select all by selecting them in the scene, and then expand and shift click and then I've got a custom action set up for this you can right click in your content library and set up a custom action for any item from there right click on it and then create custom action and it'll appear in that scripts dialog as a shortcut all right so I've got my cylinder selected I will go to the surfaces uh, the shader model doesn't matter as such I will Turn the glossy way down, turn off the reflectivity. I will set the refraction weight to 1, and the refraction index to 1. And you can see it is now invisible there. Then I will go down to the thin walled setting and turn that off. I'm going to set the transmitted distance to about 60. This sort of varies depending on the size of your primitive. I've heard different values recommended for it. What's important is that the scattering measurement distance and the transmitted measurement distance should be about the same. I'm going to set the SSS amount at about 0.03 for just a small amount of atmosphere. And the SSS direction I'm going to set to 0.5, which should orient it away from the direction of any light. Any positive number directs things away from the light, the scattering away from the light with the SSS direction, and any negative number direct scattering back toward the light, which is why we use a small negative number with skin, but that's a different topic. All right, then I'll go to my camera, and I will go to my render settings, and actually I'll double check that I have OptiX Prime Acceleration on, and all my devices are on, good. Then I'm going to add an environment map for lighting. You can get a lot of free HDRs online by Googling free HDR. Make sure that you check that the one that you choose is free for use in commercial rendering before you use it in a commercial render. I'm going to set the environmental intensity way down and I'm going to set my tone mapping to ISO 200 and my f-stop for about 11. Actually I'm going to set that to 400 because I kind of want this to be a, a night scene and my shutter speed to 1 over 64. Then I'm going to do a quick test render here. And it'll take a minute for that render to get going. This is pretty typical with iRay. It will stay at 0% in the render for a good amount of time. And then it will just take off after that. 
So the amount that the percentage tells you doesn't really tell you how much time has been taken or how much time it will take because it's going to spend the longest time at 0% and over 90% normally. All right, here we go. Scene is very dark because I set that environment light very low. And I, there we go, all done. It's almost black. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some spotlights. Create photometric spotlight. The important thing with this, if you want to create God rays, is that you need to have a very bright light and a somewhat dark background lighting environment. So, see if I can get this to do as I wish it to do. And I'm going to set that photometric pretty bright to start with. I'm going to say, eh, well, a little bit bright, 15,000. Leave the temperature at 6,500. That's relatively neutral. And see what that does. Waiting on the render. You can get a free scene using another Parkside set and a copy of the shader that I used, basically, at, in a link at the bottom of this video in the YouTube description. All right, still too dark. Cancel that. Turn the spotlight way up. Add another zero. As you can see, I'm still feeling out the tone mapping settings and how they affect the brightness or darkness of the render. But the effect of that can be significant. So if you're tired of using tons and tons of lumens for lighting, you might want to fiddle with those tone mapping settings. And also, you can look up some different ISO shutter speed combinations for different lighting conditions, you know, nighttime, daylight, etc. There we go. Now you can see we've got some nice atmospheric dust that is now visible because I turned up the light to an appropriate amount. And it's dark right up until where that spotlight hits because I've left the scene so dark. That's really all there is to it. If you point a spotlight through, for example, a glass window, you can get some very nice god ray effects this way. The important thing is that you have the SSS direction set correctly at 0.5 and away from the direction of your spotlight. This will work with pretty much any set. You can use different primitives, and I've heard it suggested that one use a torus with the middle of the torus centered on the camera so that the camera, so that the camera is always inside of the primitive but not inside of the primitive's shadered space. I haven't tried that yet, but it sounds like a good idea. I owe this method to JAG11 from the DAS3D forums, and I thank him or her for permission to include it in tutorials. Thank you very much, and happy rendering!